Well, I'm outside a 7-Eleven in Maui, and it looks like just any other 7-Eleven, right? Well, here in Hawaii, 7-Eleven even carries fishing gear. So today, I picked up some 7-Eleven fishing gear, and I'm gonna go see if I can catch something worth cooking. What most people don't know is that 7-Elevens in Hawaii are a little bit more like Japanese-style convenience stores with lots of ready-to-eat items from manju to mochi, bento, sushi, cone sushi, fish ice cream, and even more. All right, let's go fishing. Perfect cast, I landed right in the trough. Guys, guys, I got a bite. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on, fish on. You know what, it's definitely not a big fish. Yeah, it's just not a big fish. You know what's cool though, the rod's giving a lot of feedback. All right, here we go. We go. Yeah, he's still on. What is that? Oh, I think that's a moi. Yep, yep. Hey guys, so those of you in Hawaii, this is obviously known as a moi. This is also known as a Pacific Threadfin. Guys, this is a really good fish. This is an awesome first fish. In fact, you know, this is a really good sign because if I can catch a bigger one of these in that trough, that'd be amazing for my catch and cook today. These Pacific Threadfin, always remind me of like a little shark. They remind me of like a little baby shark with their nose like that. And the fins on their back even. Yeah, this is a really good fish. Really good eating fish. So far, so good. I was pretty lucky, I kept the bait. This is, uh, I'm using squid right now. Got one so far. He was just uh, too small though. He's an 11 inch minimum, so I think he was probably eight. Close. <laughs> yeah. All right, feels like I got a nibble. Yeah, something was definitely biting at it. I can't tell if he's on though or not. Yeah, it's definitely not a jack. Cause this fish isn't fighting big, but it's something. Could be another moy, maybe, hmm. <laughs> there we go, guys. Second moy of the day. This is great we're catching these. They're just too small, like regulated size. I think it was about 11 inches, I think. Man, these are such awesome fish. I hope to catch a bigger one today or, or something. I gotta catch something for the catching cut. Okay, I'm gonna switch up the bait to some shrimp. So I just switched places. I walked down the beach a little further. Oh, guys, I'm getting a bite. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Something's up. This is a good fish. This is a really good fish. Okay, I'm gonna try to land them and like pull them up here with the wave that comes in. Yeah, this is a good fish. I mean, I don't think it's gonna be a keeper, but this is a nice fish. Oh, guys, what, what do you think this is? Okay, so I thought this was a papilla when I first saw it, but 
Does anyone think this might be a big eye Trevally? I actually can't tell. This might be a big eye Trevally. They're a lot more rare, but I mean, this is either a Papillo, an Ulua, a GT, or a, uh, a big eye Trevally. If you guys think you know what it is, please put it in the comments below. Um, I mean, I'm kind of thinking it's a GT, a, a Papillo, but uh, hmm, I don't know. The eye looks really big on it. Okay, I'm switching back to squid, and I think I'm just gonna try try to stick with a squid for the rest of the day. All right, so I just had a fish bite, and it was uh, definitely a good bite, but like I think it's stuck up on something because it stopped biting, but it's at full tension. So I'm just gonna, yeah. All right, I think I have a fish on, but I think my lead is stuck on something. I'm gonna break it off. Yeah, 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 guys, so I broke the light off here. Okay, we're still on, we're still on. Man, this reel, I hope you guys can hear it. The reel feels like, uh, it sounds like those springs are gonna snap. Yeah, this is a good fish. This is the best fish so far. Come on, come on. What is it? Man, this is an no eel, guys. This is no eel. This is a bonefish. Man, I actually, you know, I don't know. This looks like a keeper, but how am I gonna cook a bonefish for a catch and cook on the beach? Man, this is such a good fish. Oh no, guys, it's literally happening short. Look at that. It's 13 and a half, it needs to be 14. I gotta get it back. I'm gonna walk out to that point over there. I think there was a storm one or two days ago and that's the only way I can imagine this pencil urchin got washed up here. I think those are Manini. Those are one of my favorite smaller fish to uh, three prong. I just gotta nibble. Yeah, something's going for it, something's going for it. Yeah, yeah, guys, I'm on. Fish on, fish on. Fish on, yeah, something's definitely on. This is something good, too. This one's pushing this 7-Eleven reel to the limit. Man, I feel like this is gonna be a jack, because this thing's fighting so hard right now. Yeah, I think it's a, it might be a yellow spot. No, 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 it's an Omilu, it's an Omilu, yes! Oh, you know what, dude, I think this thing is just under, it's probably like eight inches. And it has to be 10 to keep it, so. But this is such a good fighting fish. Man, I've had two fish so far that really pushed the reel to its limits, but uh, 
You know, this 7-Eleven rod can definitely take it, I have to admit. Alright guys, I can't seem to catch anything, you know, worth cooking over there off the rock. So I'm going to try just walking in the water and do what I know best. Try to hunt them underwater, but with uh, a fishing rod. So first up, I decided to try out the yellow jig head that came with the fishing package. Next, I tested the jig head with some squid. I had a few fish get interested, but the hook just wasn't doing the trick. I switched out the hook and tried the curl tail grub that came with the fishing package. And I know these grubs actually work decently well in Hawaii, but I don't think I was getting the action and like the cast distance I needed in order to sort of be actually whipping with that, that lure under the water. I decided to switch out the grub for a piece of squid on a size 12 or 14 hook. Part of fishing like this underwater is that I can spot the fish that I want to catch and then quickly try to cast towards it. But there was one huge unforeseen issue with my plan. When I'd see a decent sized goatfish or, or Trevally Papillo swimming by, I'd cast the bait to them and then like 10 or 15 saddle rats would just show up out of nowhere and actually scare the fish away and they'd devour the bait. You can actually see a bunch of these saddle rats or Hinalea hitting my squid down there at the bottom of the screen. And these fish are not big enough to cook up for my catch and cook. This right here was a five inch many bar goat fish or moano. It was too small to keep, but fishing underwater like this is so much fun. And this 7-Eleven rod and reel turned out to be the perfect size. It's super manageable underwater. I almost caught this peacock flounder a few times. It looked like he was eating my bait, but I couldn't get him to actually hook up on the hook. Thank you. 
Next up, I caught this small stocky hawkfish, or po'upa'a. At this point, I was considering keeping this guy for my catch and cook. I've never eaten one before, so I thought it'd be actually cool to try it out. And then, right when I wasn't looking, he slipped off the hook. Finally, I hooked up on another Moano or many bar goatfish that was a few inches larger than the first one that I caught earlier. He put up a great fight too. This underwater fishing is truly fun, guys. He measured up to the legal size, so I decided to keep this one for today's cook. These goatfish eat shrimp, small crabs, and other shellfish, and they taste great. Some people actually say the smaller goatfish taste better than the larger ones. And for this variety, I would definitely agree. That worked out pretty well. Got a fish. Let's uh, go cook it up. I saw a little spot around the side of the uh, reef here, uh, just on the side of the beach, uh, that I think I could probably go cook it pretty easily. So I'm gonna walk over there now and uh, see if I can get set up. This is a portable smoker. And what's really cool about this gadget is it's supposed to be able to impart some flavor of your favorite wood, like mesquite or alder or hickory or whatever you like the best, really quick. Uh, so it doesn't take the time, you know, a traditional smoker would take to impart flavor, as well as it's portable. So when I'm at the beach doing my catching cooks, this might turn out to be a really cool gadget. Let's see how it works out today. In Hawaii, we have lots of keawe trees, which is a species of mesquite wood. If you're from Texas, you know mesquite trees. They're everywhere. Gadget number two today is, as seen on TV, this cool little lemon mister. So I find TV, you know, products are hit or miss. I've tried lots of fishing ones, and you know, I find like 50% of them work really well. So I'm excited about this because it'll allow me to, you know, spray my lemon uh, all over things equally, apparently. I personally just like squirting lemon all over the fish as well. But uh, let's just see if this little guy can add something to my catching cooks. Oh man, guys, I don't know if you can see that. I've got like a good six sprays out of this and I didn't even squeeze a lemon or anything. Wow, that's pretty awesome actually. Okay, this is a definite win. I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested in picking one of these up.
I gotta say, this fish, it turned out good. The uh, smoky flavor definitely came through. The one thing I think it might have been missing is it needed something sweet. I don't know, smoke doesn't go sweet normally. I, I'm not sure. And so this cook turned out good, not great. Uh, next time I would keep the smoke, but I'd add something like a barbecue sauce or something that would like caramelize up a little bit more so it's sweeter. So anyways, that's all I have to say. Cool little gadget though. Hope to see you on the next one. Let's go. Watch a video. Let's play Chanel. Cause it's awesome.